John Rhodes finished his drink and went through to the bar. He gave the glass to the barman and sees the paper, Charlie. With the paper and the fresh drink, he went and sat at a table. It was closing time. The bar was empty except for the three young men. They were noisy with drink. It occurred to him they had done everything to get noticed except let off squibs. It was a neutral thought to him. That's what boys were like. He read the article about Jennifer Lawson. That's the girl who's been murdered. He read the article about Jennifer Lawson again. He hated that kind of thing. He hated the people who did it. He thought they should be put down like rabid dogs. But that wouldn't happen if they caught him. He would get some years in prison or some other place. Still enough money. And they would put you away for 30 years. Kill a girl. And they would try to understand. He hated the dishonesty of it. Money bought everything, even the luxury of being able to pretend that everybody really meant well and evil was an accident. He knew different. He had had to, to survive. His rage came on him suddenly, as it always did, an instinctive reaction he relied on more than any other. Whenever the contradictions became too much for him, that terrible anger was waiting to resolve things into immediacy, confrontation. Its force came from his preparedness always to stand by what he was, at least. It also implied an invitation for everybody else to do the same. That, at least, it seemed to him, would be a kind of honesty. For what he hated most were pretenses, the lies that people get away with, the lie of being a hard man when you weren't, the lie of being honest when you weren't, the lie of believing in the goodness of other people when you didn't have to face them at their worst. Now he saw the way the courts would handle this case as another kind of pretense. It shouldn't be allowed. He would like to do something about that. Charlie the barman was having a problem clearing the bar. The three young men still had some beer in their glasses. Come on now, boys, Charlie was saying. You'll have to go. It's past time. Piss off, one of the young men said. He sold us his stuff. Give us fucking time to drink it. Lock us in if you like, another one said. We'll look after the place for you. They all laughed. John, Charlie referred it to John Rhodes. Give the man a break, boys, he said, still looking at his paper. He's got his license to think or drink up. Oh, ho, the first one said, his master's voice. I don't see you drinking up. John Rhodes looked up at them. They were day trippers probably looking for a story they could tape back to their mates like a holiday photo. They looked like three, but they were really only one, the boy who had spoken first, the one in the green tartan shirt. The other two were running on his engine. I work here, John Wood said. Now on you go. He looked back at his paper. How are they fuck? As soon as the one in the green shirt had said it, they all knew a terrible mistake had been made. There was complete silence for perhaps four seconds. Then John Rhodes' hands compressed the paper he was holding into a ball. That crackling was as frightening as an explosion. When he dropped the paper onto the floor, the courage of everybody else in the room went with it. He crossed very quickly to the doorway. The swing doors had been pinned back to let customers out. He went past them to the two leaves of the outside door, kicked them shut, pushed the bolt home. He turned back into the pub. You want it, you've got it. Now you don't get out. It was already too late for the young men to negotiate the saving of face. He left them no room for that. All they could do was admit their terror to themselves. The shock of it had left one of them struggling for breath. Charlie, John Rhodes said, get a mop and a pail of water, but I'm going to batter these bastards up and down this pub. Now, John, please, John, Charlie said, the incredible turnaround of the man they had insulted pleading for their safety finished them. One of them whispered, no, no, mister. The one with the green shirt was trying not to admit it to himself, but he looked at John Rhodes and knew himself miserable with fear. With the dim light coming in from the small high windows fuzzing his fair hair and the blue eyes flaring, he looked like a psychopathic angel. Please, just, just let us go and we'll knock him back, the one with the green shirt said. There was a pause while John Rhodes wrestled with his own rage. The complete, honest admission of their fear was what finally calmed him. 
apologize to the man, he said. They said it in chorus, we're sorry, like a lesson in recitation. And we're sorry, the one in the green shirt began, don't apologize to me, John Rhodes said. As far as I'm concerned, you're just in probation. He nodded to Charlie. Charlie opened the door to let them out, although it seemed hardly necessary to him. They were so liquid with fear, Charlie felt he could have poured them out below the door. 